Hello and welcome back to another video of Company of Heroes 2 where I will talk about the units of the various factions. I'll talk about uh, what's historically accurate about them and what isn't and I'll give some background info on uh, infantry and team weapons and today it's uh, time to talk about the units of OKW faction. Uh, it's a German faction uh, I've already uh, released a video earlier about the Ostheer faction, it, which is the other German faction in Company of Heroes 2. That faction is supposed to be representing the um, uh, German army on the Eastern Front, um, mostly 1943 uh, to 1945 though, so the second part of uh, the war on uh, against the Soviet Union. And OKW is supposed to represent the German army on the Western Front, fighting the Allies, the Western Allies, uh, mostly the Americans and the British on uh, the Western Front from uh, D-Day in Normandy until the surrender on the 8th of May in 1945. So. Uh, OKW stands for Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, uh, which was founded in 1938 as a uh, coordinated organization to um, to lead both the Kriegsmarine, the Luftwaffe, and the uh, ground armies. So, uh, without further ado, we'll start with the infantry. And the first unit I'm uh, going to talk about are the Sturm Pioneers. And here we have the Sturm Pioniere. And they are the uh, starting unit for uh, OKW. They are all equipped with uh, Sturmgewehr 44, the uh, Sturmgewehr 44, which is a, a semi automatic rifle and um, it was a, a, a pretty revolutionary design. I already talked about it uh, before in the Wehrmacht video, uh, but in the Wehrmacht they are on the Panzergrenadiers and here they are on the Sturm Pioneers, the starting unit. Um, the helmets are the uh, regular Stahlhelms uh, and they ha uh, have uh, not a lot of equipment. They have some uh, cutting scissors on the sides and a saw and uh, the, the r rest of the equipment is just regular army equipment like the flask and the rucksack with uh, some stuff that every soldier needs which is not typically for a uh, pioneer. Uh, pioneers have been in the German army since the, well since way before World War II and uh, normal pioneer battalions uh, were or units were uh, actually there were pioneer battalions and they were uh, used in um, in combat from the start of the war uh, mainly for um, um, taking bridges uh, or building temporary bridges or blowing up obstacles, uh, clearing minefields, stuff like that. And uh, in order to be able to do that, there's this support package in uh, Company of Heroes 2 and, and there they can uh, cut wires, barbed wire, and they can uh, detect mines which are placed by the enemy and then uh, remove them by using the mine detector. Um, actual Storm Pioneers, um, they were a lot later in the war. The first accounts I could find about the Storm P Pioneers were in uh, the Battle of Stalingrad, where they were part of uh, Unternehmen Hubertus, uh, which was the, the, f the fight uh, which the Wehrmacht was um, fighting to uh, get the last bulb of resistance of the Red Army out of Stalingrad. Um, but it, that battle failed. Uh, in that battle though they were equipped with a weapon uh, which uh, you can also upgrade the Storm Pioneers with if you have the um, um, 
if you, if you choose a certain doctrine uh, which is the flame doctrine and and then you get the flammenwerfer uh, 35 which is a, a flamethrower uh, and of course the purpose of the flamethrower is to uh, clear um, uh, positions, enemy positions and uh, bunkers and stuff like that uh, actually the presence of the flame uh, thrower 35 in uh, this army which is supposed to be fighting in the last two years of the war is um, well it's a bit special because um, it was in service from 1935 to 1944 and uh, production stopped in 1941 so uh, that's a bit weird because you would expect these storm pioneers to have the Flammenwerfer 41, which was the uh, successor of the flamethrower 35. Um, so that's a, a bit uh, odd that they have this early weapon, uh, but we'll see some other examples of units that have weapons that are actually earlier than some weapons that the uh, Ostheer has on the Eastern Front in the other German faction of um, of the Germans in Company of Heroes 2. Um, another upgrade for the Sturm Pioneers, which is not really typical for Sturm Pioneers, is the Panzerschreck. And the Panzerschreck is a, uh, a handheld weapon uh, to destroy tanks. Panzerschreck means uh, tanks fright or something like that tanks terror and um, the official name was the Raketen Panzerbüchse uh, 54 um, and it was an 88 millimeter caliber reusable anti-tank rocket launcher and uh, this one was designed after the Germans captured some bazookas from the Americans in Tunisia in 1943 so uh, they found this bazooka and thought well we can improve on this one and they did they did it so successfully that the americans later declared that they actually would have preferred to have a panzerschreck instead of a bazooka um, this uh, panzerschreck weapon was uh, not very common and uh, there were um, uh, there were uh, a lot of them built, but they were not so common as the Panzerfaust because the Panzerfaust was not reusable. They had to produce a lot more of those. Uh, still, the Panzerschreck uh, had quite a respectable number built, uh, almost 290,000. Um, but still, uh, not every unit did have a Panzerschreck weapon. And in the late war, the Panzerfaust uh, was uh, a lot more common and um, uh, many more German soldiers were walking around with Panzerfausts than with a Panzerschreck. So uh, that you can upgrade the starting unit with a Panzerschreck means that you can have half your army equipped with Panzerschrecks, which is not very realistic. Okay, um, some abilities are uh, that the Storm Pioneer can throw concussive grenades and the uh, icon is the Model 24 Steel Handgranate, which is the regular uh, hand grenade. Uh, but again, this is the early hand grenade in the German army in the Second World War. It was succeeded by the M43. Uh, which had some components uh, replaced by cheaper uh, components which is typical for late war German production because they were running out of material and in the end of the war they were also running out of countries that they could uh, get uh, uh, stuff from uh, to make uh, weapons like this and uh, the weapon is concussive and uh, that's realistic because all these uh, steel handgranates were um, designed to be concussive so uh, whereas the allies had grenades that were exploding and the shrapnel was supposed to kill you uh, the concussive grenade was meant to knock you out for a bit so uh, you would be knocked out 
uh, for a long time if it landed next to you and for a shorter time if you were a bit further away. Okay, so yeah, of course they can lay bar barbed wire and they can also place a shoe minen and the shoe mine uh, 42 is uh, some kind of an improvised uh, mine. Um, it was uh, uh, actually a pretty clever design because it was made um, from wood. Um, I talked about the mine detector before and mine detectors only uh, make pinging sounds if they find something metal. And the only metal thing w uh, in the uh, in the shoe mine, uh, uh, this was, uh, by the way, an abbreviation of Schützen mine, um, was the detonator. So uh, the detonator was so small that it was easily missed by uh, mine detectors. So when the British encountered these mines in uh, Normandy they uh, started to use explosive detection dogs in order to find these mines which is uh, of course um, it's, uh, very uh, resourceful uh, if you <laughs> uh, can't use uh, mine detectors then well you have to find some other solution um, okay so uh, whereas the Sturm Pioneers were first deployed according to what I could find in Stalingrad and they appear only in Company of Heroes in the uh, on the Western Front in 1944. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the next unit which is the Volksgrenadiers. And this is the mainline infantry of the uh, Oberkommando and um, they are uh, they are um, infantry divisions which were uh, created in um, 1944 to make up for the losses that the German army had suffered uh, in on both the eastern and the western fronts. They had, uh, they had uh, lost um, a lot of soldiers when uh, Army Group Center collapsed in the eastern front and they, all, uh, and they also um, had lost in uh, Normandy, so they needed uh, divisions that were specialized in defensive operations. So uh, these guys, they uh, were equipped with um, more modern weaponry, and uh, for example, uh, the uh, Sturmgewehr 44 was pretty uh, common among these divisions. In game, you really need to build a truck first, but um, uh, in reality, the Sturmgewehr 44 was pretty common among uh, Volksgrenadier divisions. Um, they uh, they uh, had the solution for the shortage of manpower by uh, using only six line infantry battalions instead of the normal nine for infantry divisions. Um, and uh, this was made official. This was already in a lot of divisions the, the case in 1944, but uh, now it was allowed, which made the soldiers uh, feel a lot better, of course. Um, they, all, uh, they also had a lot of Panzerfausts, which you can see here, and I did the firing animation in the uh, Wehrmacht vehicle uh, video, so... Um, I'm not going to repeat that here. And uh, they can build sandbags here, which is not really very interesting. Um, but um, it's uh, pretty uh, interesting to see that um, Volksgrenadier divisions, uh, they were called Volksgrenadier because uh, it was uh, some kind of a propaganda means to, to make uh, uh, to make everyone believe that these guys were fighting for the people and um, they uh, uh, w were intended to build morale and uh, so that everybody would uh, have some more uh, nationalistic feelings about them and uh, the grenadiers uh, were called that because of uh, all their military traditions in Germany in the Prussian army the grenadiers were elite soldiers 
and therefore uh, calling your military units grenadiers also gave them this sense of uh, eliteness uh, themselves. Um, in my Wehrmacht video I uh, said something about grenadiers being called that because of their uh, rifle grenades but uh, I was wrong there so I'm correcting that mistake right now. Um, so it was based on um, Prussian tradition of elitist uh, soldiers, elite troops. Um, so uh, there were about 78 Volksgrenadier divisions in uh, the war, and they should and uh, it should be noted that they are not to be confused with the Volkssturm militias, because Volkssturm was made up of elderly people, uh, uh, veterans that are that were wounded and uh, young boys from the Hitler Jugend and they were equipped with um, the worst of the worst weaponry except for the Panzerfaust which was produced in uh, that many uh, that big numbers that even they could uh, get uh, lo loads of those but the Volksgrenadiers were actually a uh, pretty good uh, infantry unit um, veterans that have been fighting on the Eastern Front were part of those and and they are uh, they were a lot more effective than the Volkssturm uh, militias so this brings us to our next unit which are the Obersoldaten and the Obersoldaten they are a bit of a weird unit um, so what's weird about the Obersoldaten is the fact that there are no, uh, there's no real rank which is called Obersoldaten. And uh, maybe look a bit towards me guys, that's nicer for the video. Could you do that for me please? Assemble here. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, like the Volksgrenadiers, their standard weapon is the K98K. And what you can see here is that they have uh, camouflaged jackets. Um, time to correct another mistake from my previous video. I said that the Wehrmacht didn't have uh, camo schemes. Uh, actually they did. The ones that I mentioned there were actual Wehrmacht uh, examples of uh, camo, like Splinter Tarn. Um, uh, but uh, the Obersoldaten are supposed to represent probably the uh, Waffen SS units um, and they had uh, they had different camo schemes like Eichenlaub um, the um, the game developer probably uh, chose to uh, pick this kind of neutral name of Obersoldaten uh, in order to avoid uh, nasty uh, political stuff about the Waffen SS, the Waffen SS was uh, founded as the uh, as some kind of a um, uh, elite army uh, next to the uh, normal Heer. So um, the Wehrmacht was supplemented with, uh, well, not really supplemented because they were separate armies. The Waffen SS was uh, sent to uh, uh, various battles. They were. Um, the members of Waffen SS uh, units had to uh, to prove uh, their skills in uh, a bit m a bit more intense training. They were also members of the SS, of course, in which you had to prove your uh, racial purity uh, several generations back. Your blood type was uh, tattooed on the inside uh, of your. Uh, upper arm, and uh, you also had to um, had to be super loyal to the National Socialist Democratic Workers Party of Germany, the uh, Nazi Party. So uh, Waffen SS was given um, uh, the most um, advanced weaponry of the war. They had the best vehicles, and they also had the best infantry weapons. And as you can see on this guy here, uh, he has some ammo pouches here, which are for the Sturmgewehr 44. And um, actually, you can upgrade them with Sturmgewehr 44, 
in the special operations doctrine I'll go into that a bit uh, later the remaining uh, parts of the equipment is rather standard uh, binoculars on the back um, canteen on the side and um, uh, some other stuff that all uh, all soldiers had in the field this guy is standing up so we can see a bit better that he also has pouches on the other side and uh, these pouches uh, would contain ammunition so uh, you can upgrade them with the MG34 light machine gun uh, which is uh, pretty interesting because the MG34 is yet another example of um, of a weapon which was uh, succeeded already by the MG42 and um, in the late war it would be much more logical to have the infantry carry the MG42 light machine gun which is actually the case on the grenadiers in the Austria faction um, so it looks a bit like they were switching around these units a bit when it comes to the time in the war so that's not very historically accurate there right there um, and you can also upgrade them with the uh, SDG 44s from special operation let's do that for a minute so right now we can see this guy over here and he has a storm gear but it's not a very regular Sturmgewehr, as you can see. This Sturmgewehr here has a large lamp on top of it. And the lamp is uh, supposed to make you see in the dark. This whole thing is uh, called a vampire. Um, uh, uh, it's a code name. Actually, it was called uh, Zielgerät uh, 12. 29 and and uh, vampire was uh, well that's uh, a lot easier to pronounce of course and it was an active infrared device uh, for developed for this assault rifle it was also used on mgs um, and uh, similar uh, infrared gear and uh, it was developed in 1944 but it was only uh, used in combat from February 1945. Um, actually, if you uh, were equipped with these rifles, your unit was going to be called a Nachtjäger unit. And uh, that's, uh, well, uh, because these guys are not Nachtjägers, but they are uh, called Obersoldaten. And then, uh, well, that's a bit weird. Um, so uh, they were they are mixing up uh, the historical units a bit, uh, but maybe that's just for uh, convenience. Okay, so the Obersoldaten uh, also have some other abilities. Um, seven Model 24 grenades bundled. This is quite realistic. There were some. Um, events in which the uh, the troops would um, take off the 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 explosive uh, uh, charge of a model 24 grenade then they would do that five more times then they would pick one more model 24 grenade and uh, tie the explosive charges around the one that they were uh, still having complete with its stick so then the stick would have uh, seven explosive charges at once which was used for bunker clearing and uh, similar operations um, when they get to veteran one then the uh, Obersoldaten can use the Blendkörper uh, 2H frangible smoke grenade and uh, you can see in the description that it can harm nearby infantry through acute exposure which is a bit exaggerated as this Blendkörper grenade was known as to be uh, harmless or at least not lethal to uh, infantry whereas if you uh, keep your infantry within the smoke in Company of Heroes 2 they might very well die um, 
It also ob obscures line of sight, which is very realistic because it was a smoke grenade and um, it was actually some kind of uh, a flashbang type of thing which would blind people uh, in bunkers or in vehicles uh, which is actually what this grenade also does. So uh, that's uh, a bit realistic and um, it's, uh, uh, it's both a bit realistic and a bit unrealistic. So, time for the next unit, which is the Panzerfusiliers. The Panzerfusiliers ha uh, have uh, camouflaged uh, tunics, as you can see here. Their standard weapon is the K98K again, and uh, you can see they also have the standard equipment. Um, pouches for ammo and uh, canteen um, uh, this is all very regular. Uh, they have the ability to throw uh, Model 24 stick grenades and they also have the ability to uh, fire short range uh, GPG-40 anti-tank rifle grenades and uh, this only this doesn't uh, really damage uh, tanks but um, it's the it's uh, very good against uh, light vehicles. Uh, this one is um, uh, actually called uh, the uh, no. And this unit uh, can also be upgraded with uh, G43s. And uh, as you can see here, they immediately become scoped G43s, which is a bit of a luxury because um, the most of these units didn't have uh, two scoped rifles in their ranks. And um, they were uh, mostly uh, outfitted with at, uh, um, at the maximum of scoped rifles was usually one. And the G43 uh, did exist with uh, scopes, so that's not very unrealistic. Um, but the thing is that um, Panzer Fusiliers uh, are a unit which is uh, a bit of an oddity as well, in uh, history-wise, I mean. Um, they are uh, not uh, really well known in uh, big numbers in the German army. Uh, there's actually uh, only a mention of Panzer Fusiliers uh, on uh, the on the um, Panzer Grenadier Division Groß Deutschland. Uh, so actually the Panzer Fusiliers were a part of the Panzer Grenadier um, Division. Uh, so they were, uh, they had a special regiment which was called the Groß Deutschland Fusilier Regiment, and the word Fusilier comes from uh, the French word fusil, which means rifle, and um, they are, uh, according to the description, as you can see, light infantry um, meant for long-range fighting. Um, well, Panzer Grenadiers were, of course, motorized infantry. They're not motorized in-game. Uh, so, uh, this unit, although it's uh, pretty popular among uh, players, it's not super realistic, uh, except maybe for the way they look. Um, this brings us to the next unit, which is the Sturm Offizier. The Sturm Offizier uh, is also a bit suspect uh, in a way as uh, you could uh, think that this is also representing uh, maybe an, uh, an SS officer or a Waffen SS officer and that's because of the guys uh, that are uh, accompanying him uh, because they look like the Obersoldaten uh, which um, are probably I'll emphasize this again probably actually representing Waffen-SS units. Uh, the Sturm Offizier uh, is uh, supposed to be an officer in the field uh, armed with a Luger and um, leading his troops into battle uh, buffing them along the way. Um, not very spectacular unit 
uh, it's just that it's, uh, it's nice to have an officer around and um, uh, the of course in the real army there also were officers uh, actually when they were in combat they would not wear these caps because that would mean that they be would be targeted by enemy infantry immediately um, so they would uh, instead wear uh, helmets like the other guys and uh, of course they would know who to listen to um, and um, they would probably be uh, a Hauptmann or something like that um, so the next unit is the Fallschirmjäger unit and I really like Fallschirmjägers for some reason uh, because they have a very interesting history the Fallschirmjäger that you can see here they are equipped with uh, Fallschirmjäger Gewehr 42 the FG42 that you can see here uh, this guy is showing it off really nicely let's zoom in a bit more on him yeah so the FG42 uh, a weapon specially designed for the Fallschirmjägers uh, from of 1942 um, the the oddity about that is that the Fallschirmjägers by then were not really fighting as Fallschirmjäger anymore. I'll go into that a bit later. Um, this one is the scoped version. Uh, there were various versions of the FG-42. There was the, uh, the one that you could deploy with the bipod. And the scoped version which you can see here. Uh, the Fallschirmjäger also are wearing... Uh, camo schemes and they have a special jump helmet uh, which is uh, missing the rim in the back of the neck uh, which you can see on the regular Stahlhelm uh, this is because that rim on the helmet could maybe get strangled or no not strangled uh, maybe it could get entangled in the wiring of a parachute you can also see on the guy that he has uh, some weird grayish uh, shawl looking scarf looking thing and uh, those are the ammo pouches uh, on the jumpsuit because uh, regular pouches they would be attached to the belt of course and uh, they would like uh, and you would lose them if you would jump out of a plane and because these were hanging around your neck and they would uh, fling around uh, but that would make the pouches stay inside and uh, uh, increase the chance of not losing your ammo in the jump they are also wearing a jump smock and jump trousers which are all designed to make the jumping easier and uh, make it less lethal and um, these guys are actually portrayed very realistically here uh, although if I were a Fallschirmjäger I would stick my knife uh, maybe into my uh, blanket or something like that because this is uh, looking very very pointy to me uh, but um, it might be that uh, they actually jumped with the knives like that um, so uh, they also have the bundled grenade and uh, Panzerfaust and uh, Blendkörper abilities uh, I won't repeat what I told about those earlier um, but I have to go into the um, uh, jumping thing because the Fallschirmjäger they are paratroopers actually Fallschirm means parachute and Jäger is uh, well Jäger is an infantry unit which uh, was uh, also, also founded way before World War II the uh, Fallschirmjäger, they were um, used in World War II because the, uh, uh, the Germans started the war using airborne operations and um, they were uh, deployed in Poland uh, to, uh, to seize bridges and stuff like that and uh, they were used in uh, large scale operations in the invasion of uh, Norway and also in the in the attack on Western Europe so um, the the first defeat for the Fallschirmjäger was um, uh, was in Norway in April 1940 and the best uh, successes in the early war were in the 
uh, in um, Falgelp, the, the big operation to conquer France and uh, the Low Countries. Um, the Fallschirmjäger did a uh, raid on a very, uh, very powerful fortification bunker thing in Belgium, Eben Emile, and um, the Fallschirmjäger uh, took out that bunker without uh, losses. Uh, when they invaded the Netherlands, they seized most uh, the um, uh, most important bridges in the western part of the country. They also seized um, um, airfields, but they couldn't c uh, infiltrate into uh, The Hague, which was the city of the government, so the government uh, was able to escape. Um, then the Fallschirmjäger, who suffered some losses in this campaign, because uh, lots of planes were shot down, uh, they had one more big operation as paratroopers, uh, which was in Greece. The most uh, famous fight of Fallschirmjäger, um, I think, in uh, the first part of the war, uh, was Operation Mercury. Uh, Battlefield 5 has just released a... Uh, uh, recently released a map uh, that was based on that uh, battle. Uh, it has various uh, super unrealistic things uh, in it, but um, Operation Mercury was the invasion of Crete in May 1941, and uh, this also uh, started the uh, the change of the use of Fallschirmjäger in the Wehrmacht, because the Fallschirmjäger were uh, they were dropped over Crete, and they were fighting against uh, the uh, British soldiers over there, and they suffered heavy losses, not only because they uh, dropped in trees or something and then uh, got stuck, or they were shot by uh, British soldiers, but also because Cretan villagers uh, didn't want to be occupied by the Germans, and they would um, go out uh, with their pitchforks and with clubs, and they would beat Falschium Jägers to death or uh, stab them. And uh, that meant that the Falschium Jäger also took uh, revenge uh, by uh, eliminating uh, two villages on Crete and uh, mass executing uh, the civilians in there. Um, because of these uh, heavy losses, the German army decided to not use the Fallschirmjäger as paratroopers anymore. So uh, from that moment on they were flown in uh, and they would uh, just operate on the ground. Because they were trained as paratroopers they could uh, easily hold their own in a difficult fighting uh, cut off from uh, the main forces and uh, therefore their skills were used in more commando uh, raid style actions. Uh, so uh, from off uh, Crete they would uh, participate in such uh, um, big battles as in Leningrad, Sebastopol, uh, they were also deployed in North Africa um, and they had one uh, more famous uh, engagement in uh, Italy at uh, Monte Cassino and um, um, also uh, they were pretty well known because of uh, their um, rescue mission to uh, sort of uh, kidnap Benito Mussolini when he was uh, captured by partisans and held in uh, a hotel uh, at the Grand Sesso. So um, Fallschirm Jäger were uh, uh, going in and um, liberated uh, Mussolini from his captivity and put him back into power in the northern part of Italy which prolonged the war in Italy um, uh, much to the uh, unfortune of uh, lots of uh, regular Italians of course. Um, in uh, Normandy they fought at Saint-Lô and um, they were also uh, fighting in uh, the later stages of the war against the both the Americans and on the Eastern Front. Um, so the Fallschirmjäger uh, earned the nickname Green Devils because they were as, as such battle-hardened troops 
and uh, Americans had a lot of trouble uh, eliminating them. So, which brings us to our last infantry unit, the Jäger Light Infantry Recon Squad. Um, as you can see, they uh, have uh, rockets for Panzerschrecks on their back, which is a bit of a mistake because they can't be equipped with Panzerschrecks. They can be equipped with uh, G43 sniper rifles, though. Uh, th they were. Um, these guys are a uh, recon unit and a Jaeger Light Infantry was actually, uh, they were um, units that were trained to be able to hold their own in harsh terrain like swamps and uh, sometimes in uh, mountains, although mountains, uh, uh, Jaeger uh, units in mountains were mostly Gebirgsjäger. Um, Light infantry divisions like these, Leichte Infanterie Divisionen, uh, they um, became Leichte Divisionen after 1941, and uh, they were mostly uh, operational in southeastern Europe, which is a bit weird because they are part of a army uh, uh, fighting on the Western Front in uh, Company of Heroes 2, um, and uh, later in the war, they were. Um, um, renamed Jaeger Division and, and then the Light Infantry Recon part was dropped. Um, so, and I already talked about these guys in the Wehrmacht video, but uh, just to make sure, I uh, just uh, uh, they, they, they were not attached to regular units, they were separate units and they were um, uh, used to operate in rough terrain. So, um this brings us to our first team weapon it's the mg34 heavy machine gun team and the mg34 heavy machine gun team looks like regular wehrmacht soldiers uh, actually they uh, even have normal ammo pouches for the k98k uh, which is useful for this guy but not so much for this one because he has a heavy machine gun of course so, the um, MG34 is yet another example of a weapon which was actually uh, earlier than the MG42. The MG34, as the name is implying, was uh, designed uh, in 1934. It was produced from 1935 until the end of the war and a lot more of them were built than MG42's, uh, almost 600,000 uh, whereas the MG42 had a little over 400,000 built. Um, the big difference between the, uh, between the uh, MG42 and the MG34 was, that was the rate of fire. The MG42 could fire 1200 rounds per minute and the uh, MG-34 could fire about 900 rounds per minute. Um, there were also uh, other variations which were developed later which could uh, fire up to the same uh, number as the uh, MG-42, but the regular ones had a lower rate of fire. Um, this weapon was uh, mostly used as, a, as an MG in vehicles, but also, of course, in the field. So let's speak. set up, guys. Okay. So here we can see the regular setup of the MG34 on the Lafette tripod, um, which is realistic. Uh, Lafette tripods were used for both MG34s and MG42s, uh, but like with the MG42 uh, that I discussed in the Wehrmacht infantry video, uh, this one has the the box with the ammo attached to the tripod, which is totally unrealistic. And um, again, uh, it's a bit weird that the MG34 is being used as uh, the weapon for a uh, for a unit that is supposed to be fighting in the war a bit later than uh, the Ostheer uh, faction. 
Um, so, the um, MG42 has a bigger rate of fire and is therefore much more popular by Axis players in Company of Heroes 2 uh, because this MG34 is yeah a bit lackluster in that aspect. Okay, um, all else has already been discussed and uh, about the MG itself. So uh, I'll just move on uh, to the next weapon, which is this one, the Leichte Infanteriegeschütz 18. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, some sort of a uh, um, uh, light howitzer type of gun. And uh, this is uh, a bit of an equivalent of the pack howitzer of the US forces. The uh, this gun is uh, uh, designed in 1927, so I'm not really sure what the 18 is standing for, um, but um, it was uh, in service from 1932 to on uh, to the end of the war. Uh, about 12,000 of these were built, and um, the crew were transporting these guns themselves. They were weighing about 400 kilograms, which is pretty heavy of course, but uh, the crew were just moving these guns themselves and, and then setting them up uh, like this. We need to move. So, as you can see, the crew would be sitting behind a shield. The shield was uh, to protect them from um, uh, the uh, exhaust fumes, like uh, with uh, AT guns. Um, the real crew was uh, about five guys. And uh, when they would fire, it would look like this. The gun would be elevated and then they would fire the shells and the rate of fire was uh, 8 to 12 rounds per minute so they could uh, reach quite some distance with a barrage of these um, so there were some variations of this gun uh, that were used by the Gebirgsjäger they were uh, called the they were called the l not the like like this one but the like big with uh, the gebirg thing uh, crammed into the middle of the word and and uh, the those guns uh, could be broken up into four to six different loads so that the guys could easily transport the guns from one place to another um there were also some uh, improvements suggested, but the guys in the field didn't feel like this was a lot of uh, a lot better than what they had, so they st they stuck with the uh, the Leichte Infanteriegeschütz 18. Okay, next gun. Uh, this is the Raketenwerfer 43 anti-tank rocket launcher. Um, and uh, as you can see, this is a, a very uh, small gun on a two-wheel uh, carriage and it can also be transported by infantry. So if they are walking around with it, it looks like this. Run, guys. And now it's set up. Uh, well, the funny thing about this is that it has, uh, it's an AT uh, weapon, of course. Um, according to the description, it fires the same rocket as the Panzer Shrek. And that's not really true because um, uh, the grenade had a shorter tail boom and uh, the um, uh, the way it was fired was also um, uh, different because it was uh, percussion primed and uh, in the Panzerschreck it was electrically primed. So this uh, shaped charge warhead that was um, uh, 
being fired by the Raketenwerfer 43 was uh, not exactly the same uh, as the Panzerschreck uh, rockets but the confusion is pretty understandable because they had uh, an identical warhead and also identical fusing. Uh, so, um, a little historical mistake uh, uh, here in the description, but I've also seen some uh, uh, sources outside of Company of Heroes 2 stating that the Raketenwerfer uh, is uh, shooting the same rockets as the Panzer Shrek, which is not true. Um, this uh, gun had the nickname Püppchen, which means little doll or dolly, uh, which is, uh, of course, uh, it could be interpreted as a sweetheart or something like that. And um, apparently that is the nickname for this uh, gun carriage because it's much smaller than the normal Panzer Abwehrkanonen, the PAC 38 and the PAC 40, uh, let alone the PAC 43 that we will see next. Um, and uh, so it, it was kind of a cute anti tank gun, and so uh, therefore it was um, called Püppchen. Uh, so this one doesn't fire shells, it fires rockets. And um, there is uh, about 3,000 of these were built and uh, they were uh, only in use in the last two years of the war. Uh, so they were in use from 1943 to 1945, which makes this a very fine example of a late war weapon in the German army on the Western Front. Um, this one uh, was not really popular by the troops because uh, you could also use a Panzer Shrek, which you could just carry with you and you didn't need the carriage with the two wheels. Uh, also, it uh, was not super uh, effective and um, some people state that uh, uh, you could have some anti-tank hunter, a tank hunter badge, you could earn it in the German army but you would not earn it if you would have used the Raketenwerfer 43. Some people state that it's because it was killing vehicles so easily. Not true. And uh, you uh, could not get that badge because the badge had some specifics and the Raketenwerfer did not meet those sp specifics. So your kills with the Raketenwerfer didn't count towards that badge. Um, that's it. So, uh, and no uh, spectacular uh, feats by the Raketenwerfer. Actually, uh, soldiers preferred uh, to use other AT abilities if they had them. Okay, talking about AT, we go to the next AT weapon, which is a very big team weapon, which we can see here. I've talked about this one earlier on the Wehrmacht video. I made one mistake. Let's set it up. Because this is actually, uh, the mistake is also made by Company of Heroes 2 themselves. Because this one says, here it says PAC 43. And it's not actually a PAC 43. The real PAC 43 is a gun which is mounted on a carriage with four wheels. And it looks symmetric. So uh, there's two wheels on this side and two wheels on that one. And uh, so this one is actually the PAC 4341, which is a variation. Um, uh, a little over 2,000 of these were built and they were, um, they were in service from 1943 to 1945, making it yet another fine example of a late war weapon. And um, the PAC 43... Uh, 41 uh, was uh, designed because um, uh, there was some delay in the in the pro in the production of the first Pac 43, and uh, so there was um, there was a new barrel uh, made, and that was called uh, Pac 41. So uh, this one together was then uh, made into Pac 4341. Um, the PAC 41 uh, was actually um, uh, uh, mounted on a two-wheel split-trail carriage, 
which was the same one which was used on the Leichte Feldhaubitze 18, which I will talk about a, bit a little later, and uh, with different wheels from another howitzer. The Puck 41 was ballistically identical to the Puck 43, so they could fire the same shells. And um, uh, the Puck 43 and Puck 41 uh, barrels were very similar, but it's not sure if they were identical. Um, s but since they were so much alike, the gun was called Puck 43-41. Um, in the game it's pretty easy for the troops to uh, turn it around as I've shown before uh, but uh, it was on the Eastern Front it was very awkward to handle because of the mud of the Rasputitsa and the snow in the winter time so uh, gunners called it the barn door because it was so difficult to uh, put it into a new direction uh, which brings us to the next uh, crew weapon, which is the 2 cm Flak 38 emplacement. This is an emplacement that you can build if you have uh, certain commanders, like the Fortifications Doctrine. It's also the standard uh, base defense mechanism, whereas the Austria has bunkers with machine guns, the uh, Oberkommando der Wehrmacht has these uh, Flak and placements in the base. Um, it's a 20 millimeter anti-air gun and uh, this anti-air gun uh, was um, made in a, a spe uh, uh, special for uh, fighting against uh, aircraft of course. It was uh, produced from 1934 to 1945 and uh, uh, over 140,000 of these were produced there were several variations. The Flak Vierling is the most uh, famous one, in which they just put four barrels uh, together, which were uh, firing alternately. So, um, uh, but the it was also used in this setup that you can see here: uh, a gun shield, the gun itself, and a crew, uh, in. Uh, in reality the crew would consist of five guys instead of two um, and uh, this gun uh, uh, was uh, the successor of several designs uh, like the Flak 28 and the Flak 30 um, the uh, Flak 38 uh, increased the rate of fire to 220 rounds per minute from uh, 120 rounds per minute of the Flak 30. So the Flak 38 was accepted as the standard army gun in 1939 and uh, they were used in anti-air service throughout the war. Um, in game you can use these also against infantry. In reality they were also used against infantry. Sometimes they were even mounted on carriages so you could push them around and uh, use them as anti-infantry weapons. Okay, time for the last weapon, which is the Leichte Haubitz uh, 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 18. I already talked about this one in uh, the Wehrmacht video, but um, I have to correct the mistake yet again, because I said that uh, because of the number 18 that it was designed in 1918, uh, but it turns out that um, that was a ploy to fool the Allied powers. Um, it was actually designed in 1935 and 1936 and entering uh, service uh, shortly after. Um, uh, no, it, it was even designed, uh, it was produced from 1935 and designed in the uh, late 20s. Um, so the uh, the allies had to be fooled apparently because of the uh, Versailles Treaty and, and Germany could not uh, produce heavy weaponry of course so um, they were uh, calling it uh, 18 to, um, to make believe that it was already there before the Treaty of Versailles that's my guess at least um, 
it is actually the successor of the Leichte Feldhaubitze 16, which actually was uh, designed in 1916 and uh, used in the First World War. But this one, the 18, is not used in the First World War simply because it didn't exist yet. Um, it was used in horse-drawn artillery battalions, uh, especially in uh, on the Eastern Front, because the horses were uh, better at dealing with the mud and the snow than the heavy German vehicles over there. And um, the uh, the Feldhaubitze uh, had a great part in various battles uh, in the Eastern Front, uh, for example in Stalingrad, but it was also used in North Africa against the British and um, uh, it was also uh, it, uh, it later in the war it became a bit less common uh, because uh, th these were hard to take with you if you were routed with your division or battalion so um, uh, la the later in the war, uh, more of these units were uh, lost to uh, the enemy. Um, so, just because it looks cool, we'll have it fire at a target right here, so it doesn't shoot our friendly guys from the Leichte Infantry to shoot. And um, with uh, this uh, story about the Leichte Feldhaubitze, I am going to conclude the uh, video about Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, infantry and uh, team weapons. Uh, so, um, the next video will be about the vehicles of the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht. And, um, well, I uh, see the loader putting in the uh, last, uh, no, almost the last shell. And uh, they keep firing, man, wow. So, um, okay, this, there goes the last one. And, uh, well, that's it uh, for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching and have a nice day.